It's a good story if it's like Manila Hotel. Ernest Hemingway famously said, Indeed, Manila Hotel is quite a story in itself. This hotel has a history to which no other can lay claim. The Manila Hotel's own story began over a hundred years ago. Manila at the turn of the century, 1900, the Philippine-American War was still in progress, but Manila was cleared enough so that civilian government was going into a transition and taking over uh, the city itself. What they found out was that the city was damaged in some areas and a lot of the infrastructure was not up to par uh, for the needs, which was to establish Manila as the uh, colonial capital in the Philippines for the United States. So they thought it best to bring over a consultant, a planner, and this was Daniel Burnham. William Howard Taft, upon assuming the post of Governor General of the Philippines, envisioned an orderly development of the city of Manila. Architect and urban planner Daniel Hudson Burnham was commissioned to create an urban plan for the city. Manila was the capital and that was the focus of the Burnham Plan of 1905. The plan was based on a central core of civic buildings surrounded by the rest of the city, including residential, commercial, and institutional zones. That central core was the Luneta, and the Luneta was reconfigured to be a mirror of the Washington Mall in Washington, D.C. It's about the same width, although it's about a third of the length, with a focal point being a monument, in our case was the Jose Rizal Monument, eventually, in the case of Washington, D.C., was the Washington Monument. Daniel Burnham did not believe in destroying the architecture of Manila. Actually, he believed that the original design of the city of Manila, which was Intramuros, should be accentuated. And so the Manila Hotel became part of the complementary plan of Intramuros and Extramuros. An important aspect or por portion of the plan was the uh, waterfront. And the waterfront, much like uh, Chicago's waterfront was imbued with a lot of uh, elegance and, um, and stateliness. And the elements in our waterfront were a central green. The old Luneta was brought forward 1,000 feet so that it would face the sea. And then uh, spaces for key buildings. So you can see that most of the stuff that we have around the Manila Hotel and the parade grounds are institutional. So you have the Elks Club, you have the Army-Navy Club, uh, you have a grandstand, you have the ocean, and you have the Manila Hotel. So basically, if you were an important institution, you had to be based in this particular area. Burnham envisioned, among other things, a wide tree-lined boulevard along the bay, culminating in a handsome white hotel. The Manila Hotel was really important in the creation of the Philippine state. I mean, if you look at the design of Daniel Burnham, where Jose Rizal is the center of Philippine society, literally the kilometer zero. So you can really see that this was the address where Philippine history started from. I mean, just look at the address, one Rizal Park. There's no other address like that in the Philippines nor in the world. When Burnham went back to the United States, he then handpicked a fellow, uh, a Yale graduate, uh, to take that place as consulting architect for the Philippine government. And that person was William E. Parsons. The uh, brief that was given to him was to design a hotel to cater to visiting officials, uh, both in civilian and military government. When the Americans came, I'm sure they probably freaked out. And when you're used already to the accommodations that you would be experiencing already in New York City and Chicago at that time, in the late 1900s, coming to the Philippines probably at that time was like coming into the 14th century. It was probably like you were staying in a convent in Intramuros. To make the Americans even want to stay here, they had to build something that would make them stay here. You know, and so the Manila Hotel had to be built in order to accommodate the new leaders and their tastes. Thus was Manila Hotel conceived for the use and needs of Americans living in or passing through Manila while living in the Orient. Parsons' design was very simple. The building was a U-shaped structure with a front facade and two wings. In the middle was a large garden courtyard. The two wings were made of four floors, on top of which was an open deck. 
The original design of the hotel had all the top deck open and this had views to the sea. The hotel was built in the style of California missions with all white concrete and steep pitched green tile roof, a wrought iron port cochere to shield guests from the hot sun and driving rain of this tropical city. Its 149 rooms were spacious and had high ceilings, naturally ventilated at the very onset. Showing a fine respect for native materials, Parsons used the beautiful Philippine mahogany called nara in the interior as well as native marble. The rooms looked out either to the Manila Bay, the fortress islands of Corregidor in the distance, and Manila's famous sunsets providing daily spectacles, or eastward to the walls of the old Spanish fortress of Intramuros and palm-lined promenades of Luneta Park. And then comes the Manila Hotel, this grand building made out of cement which is almost space-age technology at that time. Marrying Spanish design and American technology, including this thing called air conditioning. <laughs> so it is very defying the tropics. Um, it had things called ice. It had Coca-Cola. It had scotch. It had continental cuisine in a country that pretty much um, was still you know, living off the land itself. And that's where it really changed everything. It changed the game when it came to Manila. If you wanted to compete in, in terms of luxury, if you had to continue, compete in terms of, hotel, of, of hoteling, you had to compete with the Manila Hotel. The hotel was opened in 1912 on the date commemorating American independence with a grand celebration that included fireworks and a formal ball. Equipped with the best facilities, the hotel was a venue where the Americans came to dine, dance, or hear and exchange stories from home. The Manila Hotel had become the capital's social center where one went to see and be seen. Over the next two decades, the Manila Hotel quickly rose to prominence as the premier luxury hotel in the Philippine capital.